Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together. And we work on projects for about an hour here. And we work on projects from beginning to end. So you can see the whole process all along the way. Uh, and tonight, you guys, we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler 2. Here is the book right here. We are doing the quilt along of 100 different quilt blocks here of all different styles of uh, sewing. Uh, we got applique, we got piecing, uh, uh, English paper piecing, foundation paper piecing, embroidery. <laughs> it's kind of got it all. So if there's a technique you want to practice on or you want to learn everything there is to know about quilting real quick, uh, it's a great project. And we're working through the whole uh, the whole book. So we're doing all of the blocks from here. So uh, I am going to continue on page 67. It's the trip to the quilt shop right here. Cute, cute. And uh, last night, I mean, we're getting there. I think we might uh, finish it tonight. So we, uh, we have the whole thing done. We stitched our little compass in the middle. And then tonight we are going to put the text on. So we've already traced it from last night and now we're just gonna stitch up some text uh, and we might play around with it we'll see how far we get tonight but it might be fun to just try adding some thicks and thins to the line a little bit we'll see kind of how that goes uh, but first we'll stitch it all up so all right uh, I'm gonna flip you around everyone and we'll get started stitching for tonight sounds like it's pretty snowy by a lot of you guys we still have nothing like no snow and it, the snow we had can't even melt because it's you know super duper cold today uh, or to this weekend though we're supposed to get some super cold weather so we'll see how that goes okay back at it here Okay, so we got this far again. I think it's just fun to see like the difference in colors, what two different blocks end up looking like. I, we did such a pale, pale colors. That's kind of the whole, like whole quilt is gonna be. This blonde quilt is what we're saying, <laughs> which I think is so cute. So, all right, we did pink for uh, the uh, compass here, but we are talking about doing this gray for the bottom. I think that'll just be super subtle. It'll actually probably look a lot like how it's looking right now in pencil, but I kind of like that. And I like these pinks and grays are always so cute together. Um, so I think we're gonna do that. And I chose it from, I have this like bin of just scrap yarn. So I've been working my way through that. So, all right, let's, let's do some stitching. All right, so first off, I'm gonna get about, um, my 24 inches of thread or so that I like stitching with. All right, and uh, we are stitching this with two strands of thread. I usually, when I work on an embroidery project, my own embroideries, I usually do three strands of thread, but in this case, we need super thin little lines. So the amount of thread you use kind of to determines to some degree the thickness of your line. So because we're only stitching with two threads, it's gonna be a little thinner than my normal my normal stitching, which is, which is great for text and stuff like this, super small text. All right, I'm gonna separate my two threads. Uh, I just kind of pulled out of my six strand embroidery floss, I just pulled kind of one strand here. And I'm gonna hold the rest while I pull that out. Boop, and then it relaxes. All right, let's get our second strand. Separating another one out of here. Pull that one out. Boop! Needs a sound effect. <laughs> First one had one, so gotta give the sound effect to the second. All right, so I'm placing them together and just running my hand down along the edge to kind of get them together. Oh, Bonnie, by you, by Sunday, it's supposed to be down to one. So I asked someone what it's supposed to be like uh, this weekend, temperature wise. And they're like, <laughs> here was her answer. Her answer was, well, in Minneapolis, now they say that it doesn't really get too much further below negative 20. 
So that's how she was prefacing that we probably won't get below negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so that's not looking promising here, people. <laughs> So we'll, we'll see what it ends up being. And I don't know when it's going to start or, or what. So I don't know. But that ain't sounding nice. <laughs> so all right, you guys. Um, I'm going to do this stitching again by uh, just holding it without a hoop. I'm just going to use kind of my fingers as a hoop again here. So I, I'm kind of holding my hand. I'm kind of stretching the area a little bit by my fingers here and kind of stretching it in back here as well. Uh, so I'm kind of making a little stretched hoop area as I stitch. and I'm, I'm just going to kind of continue along the line here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to shush this uh, seam allowance out of the way. So we are stitching way close to the seam allowance. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I just, I think... I think just to make it easy, so I'm stitching through only one layer of fabric, I'm gonna just push push away. So while I stitch, I'm kinda, I'm kinda holding that back too, so that's an extra little um, deal. Uh, you might wanna actually press uh, the seam allowance this way, and then when you're done stitching, may maybe press it, press it that way, but we'll see. Oh, do they have Anna Green Gables fabric? I'm sure they do. Uh, I, I have no idea who does it. I know. Um, Andover did Little House on the Prairie fabric, so maybe maybe they did Anna Green Gables too. Um, not sure. All right, so making my little edge. Uh, I'm going to just start stitching at the bottom of this S here, and I'm going to leave the little tail hanging again, like I did last night. So I'm going to just leave like a you know three to four inch tail. I'm going to kind of grab that too, so it doesn't slip through. I'm going to weave that in later. So all right, I'm gonna actually see if I can get a little closer for you guys. All right. I bet you it's a bunch of ginghams or something for the Anna Green Gables fabric. I haven't seen it, but I have a, I have a picture of it in my head. Little small, detail-y, uh, earth tony colors. All right. Uh, like the small little flowers, teeny tiny florals, and teeny uh, ginghams, I would, I would think. <laughs> I'm totally guessing here, though. All right, so I'm going to uh, just make some very small back stitches here. Uh, because we have these curved shapes, it's the same situation as where we were doing this circle and the S last night. Um, you know, when you're stitching... You're actually st stitching straight stitches, like every stitch is going to be straight. So to get the appearance of these curves, we're going to have to do uh, more stitching um, so we can mimic mimic that curve. So my stitches are going to be smallish here. And uh, again, just so I can get the curve going. And uh, so my stitches for the straightaways might be a, a hair bigger. Oh, Suzanne, your scrubby yarn came today. I want to try that yet. So, uh, oh, who posted it? Someone did a, in our, our Penguin and Fish Crafters group here on Facebook, um, someone did a uh, uh, dishcloth, like the one that we were, we were making online last week. Like, here's, here's mine. Um, she did one where half was this cotton yarn and the other half was this scrubby yarn. I didn't even know they, they made that. So I, I think that would be fun to try as well. So the scrubby yarn, it's just kind of like, I'm sure it's some sort of acrylic or plasticky type material, but it's kind of mimics you know, like a scrubby uh, dish, what are those? Like those little dish circles that are colorful and, and scrubby. So it's a whole yarn that's like that. So uh, like a specifically for making dish cloth. So you get the little scrubby side on it. Oh, they had it at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, that's a popular thing then. Neato. All right. It is not easy so far to hold this seam allowance out of the way. So we'll see if I 
keep doing that. Oh, someone said that they pinned it back. I don't want to stab myself, though. I think I'll just keep trying to hold it back for now. Oh, your aunt makes little scrubbies. Oh, I suppose you could just kind of like crochet a bunch of like a little circle of those. That'd be kind of neat. So now here's an example. With, with this straight edge, I'm just going to go straight across in one big stitch. But for the curved edge, I'm going to have to add more stitches to get that curved effect. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up not stitching through this uh, seam allowance. I'm going to try the sewing method of stitching here for a sec where I go in and out at the same time. See if that works a little bit better for me here. Yeah, so if you guys saw what I did just there, I am there are kind of two ways of embroidering. There's like the stab method where you go all the way down like I just did and, and pull all the way through and then come back up. I like that method because you can be really uh, clear, really exact where you place um, your stitch and I can go straight down into the next hole like, like that. So I do really love that style, um, but, so that's the stabbing method. The other method is the sewing method and for that method, you come up and then you go in and out at the same within the same motion so I'm going I'm finishing the first stitch and then starting the next stitch all at once and that way we kind of stay on the top I think this might be my way of not accidentally stabbing through that seam allowance I can just come down and up at the same time and, and I can keep I can keep my hand keeping that seam allowance out of my way all I gotta watch for is that I don't pull my stitches too tight because I'll start I'll start bunching my fabric up you know like that and I just I still need it to lay flat because it's a flat block oh I could tape the back that might not be a bad idea let's let's give that a try it's just annoying I mean, I could press it too, probably, but there's uh, so many seams back here that it's going to always want to be this way. So let's see, I do have some blue painter's tape. I mean, this is kind of overkill, but let's give it a try. We'll try a little piece. I mean, that's not a little piece, but we'll try a short piece here. We'll see if this works or not. <laughs> there we go. Get that out of my way. <laughs> All right, now let's give it a try. I think this might totally work. <laughs> that would be awesome. There, I still think I'm going to do the the um, sewing method of this, though. I, I think that is going to help. But, oh, yeah, this is totally helping. Um, now I can use my hand as uh, my uh, embroidery hoop again, whereas before I was kind of fumbling with holding holding that seam allowance back. Ha <laughs> ha, success so far. And I keep turning my um, my piece here just so it's just kind of the most comfortable in my hand. So if, if it doesn't feel comfortable like doing a certain stitch, try just rotating, rotating your hand a little bit. I think uh, doing the sewing method, like going in and out right away, uh, especially with this tape, it's going to help me not get my thread tangled and stuff too. All right, this K is awfully cute. Uh, let's start at the bottom, I think. Oop, my little threads are getting all tangled, but... I think I want it to do that. So yeah, anyway. All right, so this straight edge, just because it's a little longer, I think I might do two stitches for that. And get this little serif, which is that little teeny foot, basically. I 
I'm kind of rotating it more, my piece more for this sewing method because to go in and out, it's easiest for me to keep going in this direction. So I keep turning it. You thought about doing the embroidery, but it would be lost. I think it'd be, I don't know. It's one of those little details that you see once you just really take a look at the quilt. It's one of those things that will catch your eye in the light a little bit just because it's, um, you know, it's got a different texture and it's a little 3D and stuff. So it might not be something that you see right away, but I don't think it'll get like lost. You love embroidery and Andy Black, Debbie. Yeah, it, it, I think it just really adds a cuteness for sure. All right, I, I'm gonna go back to the sewing method. I changed there for a sec. All right, well, we got our first word here done. Seek, oh man. This tape's getting everywhere now. But it is actually very helpful not to, um, to get that seam allowance out of the way. It's a little putsy, but not as putsy as with there. All right, there it is up close. Seek. I think it's gonna be pretty subtle with this gray, but I kind of like that. I mean, with all of the details on this particular quilt, I am not going overboard. Like I, I want things to kind of blend in a little bit more. Which is funny, um, someone mentioned here that my, the knitting project that I did, that, that, uh, that doily, or not doily, that um, uh, washcloth was also kind of like these pale colors. And the reason I did these pale colors in this block was because I've been doing so many super bright quilts lately. I like my last Splendid Sampler quilt and the Charming Chevrons quilt and all that. I just felt like, oh man, I need to, maybe all I can do is these bright quilts. I gotta give myself a challenge and, and do like a, a, pale, a pale quilt. And now apparently <laughs> that's my new kick, <laughs> you know, the pale dishcloth and this pale quilt just, just excited about that color palette lately, I guess. All right, getting that last little foot on this A. Yeah, and I just traced mine here with pencil. Oh man, Terry, you made 14 dishcloths. So you guys, I am, uh, after making that dishcloth, it has been a long time since I've been knitting and I didn't really realize that until I knit that I'm like oh dang this feels right it feels good <laughs> um, knitting that dishcloth and so I got so excited when we were talking about knits and pearls and uh, this sounds crazy <laughs> uh, just thought the sentence I got so excited with my knits and pearls is just that would kind of stop me it made me laugh in my head uh, but uh, I got so excited about the knits and pearls uh, discussion that we were having with the with the dishcloth where a knit will put a bump on the back and a pearl would put a bump on the front. I just love that. And uh, it reminded me of, I have this book um, called Knit Fix. It's an older book. I've had it for ages and ages. Uh, I don't know if any of you have looked over it, but it's basically someone wrote a book about all the things, all the mistakes that you might be doing with your or with your knitting. Like what happens if all of a sudden you have one more stitch on your needle than you thought or than you needed? Or what happens if you see a hole in, um, in your piece somewhere? Or what happens if you drop a stitch or, or, or your needles pull all the way out of of the thread and you just have all the loops, you know? So it's, it's all, it's all how to fix all those kind of disasters. And I just, one thing that always hangs over me is, um, how to put the stitches back on the needle. If you made a mistake or like, if you, if you, um, made a wrong stitch and you have to backtrack a little bit, uh, that I never quite was confident on how to put it back on the needle or like how to not twist the stitches. And I think I got, uh, like I, I read I read the book a little bit today and 
and uh, I got that a little bit. So for that, the um, the right part of the stitch should always be in the front, like when it's on the stitch. That might not make sense unless you are looking at knitting in front of you. But uh, anyway, so that I feel more confident about. And then the other thing was dropping a stitch, like where you drop a stitch and then you have like a run all the way down through your your um, piece, kind of how to get that back in line. And not only that, but to use that as a tool. Like if you see one error down in your piece, like you've like, oh, like 18 rows ago, you realize that you purled instead of knit and you have like that purl bump, um, that you can like 18 rows up, drop a stitch and drop and make a run, kind of like a pantyhose run, all the way down to that stitch that you made a mistake on, like go shoop, way down into your piece, um, edit that stitch, and then bring all those stitches back up. I kind of want to try that. So now I have, now, um, like that seems like magic to me. And I kind of knew you could do that, but I never felt really confident enough to even understand it enough to figure it out. Um, so now with this dishcloth, all of a sudden I feel like way confident to try some, try on purpose making those mistakes and, and fixing it. And a dishcloth is like the perfect thing to do that with. So I might, I might, uh, one of these evenings, I might stitch like a square swatch back and forth and then on purpose put a wrong stitch in the middle and then stitch up more and then try to go down and fix that stitch and bring it back up. I, I want to give that a try because that was always too scary for me to do. But with a dishcloth, you know, it, it's hardly, it takes hardly any time. So I want to try that and I want to, I don't know, try a few other of these fixes. But I don't know, I've all of a sudden got super duper excited about it. Losing the needles often. Oh, that's happened to you so many times when the when you the, the needles just come completely out of all the loops. So that too, I want to on purpose knit a whole thing and then take it off of the needles and see if I can get it, see if I can put it back together. That I would like to try because that's been like such a fear is um, is that knitting, like losing stitches and, and stuff. That's why I kind of like, crochet. I like the look of knitting, but with crochet, I always know I only have that one loop. <laughs> You're so lost. Sorry, Lisa. Then I'll, I'll stop talking knitting for a little while. Just got super excited about it with that dishcloth that we made. And now I got that yarn out again. I think there may be more knitting in my um, near future. We'll see. So it's funny, you guys, when I stop paying attention to what I'm doing here, I go back to the stabbing method, since that's kind of my go-to method. That's like my internal muscle memory method. And uh, uh, But I want to keep doing this sewing method, because I think it's, I think it works well for, for this. So back to the sewing method. I'm going to have to move my... Um, my tape soon. I'm reaching the end of how long I cut it. Yeah, that's what I want to try, Noeline, using using the um, like a crochet hook to bring the stitch up. So I'm almost, you know, I have I got that cool pack of interchangeable needles. That little case that it came with. I put a darning needle in there, or wait, is that what it's called? Like those fat needles that are really. Um, dull that you can use for yarn and stuff. Uh, I put I put one of those in that kit and then I also put a little scissors and it like a little one of these stork scissors in in there as well. But that would be a, another thing that that I could put into it just a crochet hook just in case I have like an error like that and then it's like a perfectly perfect little knitting kit right there I think. Just grab that and a ball of yarn and I'll be ready to go. So, all right, I think, well, I got a few more stitches left that I can get out of this thread. I'm gonna do a couple more here and then I'm gonna weave in this thread to the back. I'm almost out of, out of floss here. So we'll get 
get a new piece and I'll readjust my tape here so it covers the rest of um, the seam allowance and we'll give it a go. Change things up. Okay, I'm gonna try and get the whole S here done. Running out of thread though. Feels good to be doing embroidery again too here. I definitely want to do it. another embroidery uh, project quick here in, in the future. I'm almost over this hump of um, um, this project I'm working on. So I'll be able to get back, I'm gonna remove this. I'll be able to get back to, I still wanna do that llama sewn book cover with that zipper pouch in it. I, I've still, I did not forget about that. I still wanna do that. I just had this other crazy project pop up, but that's almost through and I want to put that together for us still because I'd love to stitch that, stitch the llama, um, my llama kit with you guys. All right, that's that. Let's snip, and uh, now I want to get this one, and it looks like I already kind of grabbed a bit of it, so I'm going to still try and thread both of these. Oh, you love the llama! You got the Harmony Guide to Knitting Stitches. Oh, so many amazing stitches! So I have this other, so this is the other thing I'd love to do. So um, you guys, I mentioned that maybe, oh, I don't have it near me, but I had that cone of, of yarn. Uh, that cotton yarn that I made the dishcloth out of. I would love to do like a little mini sale of those uh, if you guys are interested in a whole cone. Um, it would be like a pre-order thing because I'd, I'd take your guys' order and then order the colors um, so I know how much to order. Um, but then it'll just take a, like a week or two for me to get it. Uh, but I would love to stitched through one of those ball or one of those cones and I think I can get about 15 dishcloths out of the cones but I, I have this calendar of knitting stitches so it's it's a new stitch for every day so like 365 fancy stitches it would be fun to knit up a like a, a swatch basically a swatch of those um and each each swatch would be a dishcloth you know so a, like 35 stitch by 35 row or however to make it look like a a dishcloth size but use that as a, a tool to learn some of these new stitches just go through that go through that calendar which I've been meaning to do too so all of a sudden this knit fix book and that calendar is like on my brain again so something was triggered for sure by doing that uh doing that dishcloth. <laughs> I'm like all gung-ho about it again. Things that I, um, things that I've had forever, these books, and just never started. And now, you know, I've read part of that Knit Fix book, and man, I'm just all about it lately. But yeah, so you guys, maybe this time, maybe, um, if I have some time, uh, I'm not gonna be here this weekend. Um, yeah, one of these weekends, maybe next week, I'll be able to, I'll put together like an email for um, some of those cones. We'll see how it goes. And then I'll share the, the pattern that we did for this as well. And the calendar too, honestly, if you wanted to do that, work on the calendar with me. All right, here we go. Oh, you love the basket weave. Yeah, I think that's just so cute. I remember that that was my one of my first... I mean, I don't know many fancy things with knitting unless I am reading straight from a pattern. But um, I'm going to weave into the backs of stitches I already have here. Um, but... The basket weave was one of the first 
ones that I kind of learned that was kind of fancy, but not too difficult. And it's something I could understand as like, I don't know, whenever I learned it, like a 13 year old or something. Have I bought anything fun lately for quilting? Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't buy anything fun, but I did get a cool Christmas present. Let me see if that's near me. I'm not seeing it within arm's reach. Oh, wait, it's by my feet. <laughs> I got, um, oh, I got, I got this set of quilting rulers. So to make like scallops and stuff with my, my quilting foot, it's, a, it's the Westerly uh, quilting feet here for home sewers. So I do, I kind of, I got these. That's my new quilting toy. I have not tested them out yet. Um, and, uh, and I don't know, I want to, I want to give it a try. All right, I'm going to finish up this text. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, Joe. That would be something fun. So I know we still have those other projects that I want to do. I want to do the uh, a llama sketchbook for sure. I know I've gone like way behind on these projects that I wanted to do. I wanted to do these way early last year, and um, uh, it just didn't happen yet. But I'm, I'm still want to do it. So we have that llama book cover definitely want to do that. I would just have to, I'm in the process of rewriting the pattern so you can use any, you can do it with any size sketchbook. Make the a fabric cover with a zipper for all these different sizes. So I'm working on that and then we'll do that. I got some really pretty linen and everything um, available for that. I do want to start this granny square quilt. I think that would be a fun thing, and uh, um, yeah, it'd be fun to pepper in some other projects, like a little knitting thing. I don't know if we'll go through a whole calendar here. Uh, it might be something that I just do, like little short Facebook Lives or something. Um, oh yeah, I think that's what I have, Joe, that, that perpetual calendar with each, each stitch is different. I'll have to find it. I'll get it out again. But... You know, so maybe I'll do like a little short Facebook Live every once in a while, just showing kind of what stitch from that I'm working on. I'm not going to do it every day, like a 365-day thing. It'll just be kind of randomly, maybe I'll go in order, like, I don't know. I'm just making this up immediately right here. <laughs> like one every other week or something when we have some time or, or something, do just a, like a little tiny bit of one. And um, then just finish finish the washcloth. Maybe not do all of it live. I don't know. But it would be fun to do like a little basic knitting um, thing with you guys here. And then from there, work on, work on some of these. It'd be fun. And of course, there's the Splendid Sampler 2 here yet. Got a whole pile of blocks to do here yet. Projects are piling up again. How did that happen? But no, I definitely want to do some more video stuff and we will see what lies ahead. We have that studio space now, so I think we'll be able to do a lot more there as well. You're so far behind on, on the Splendid Sampler too, Debbie. Yep, I'm going to get further and further behind, that's for sure. And, you know, we might actually do that on purpose, get far behind um, so we can work on some of these other projects, and then maybe we just pick up a block on this every once in a while. I'm actually feeling like I'm getting behind on, on a lot of the blocks or like that I'm I'm wanting to kind of finish up some blocks so we might need a finish it up day for some of those oh 
Oh, I missed whose birthday it was. Happy birthday. I looked up and all of a sudden there's happy birthdays everywhere. <laughs> oh, Lisa. Happy birthday, Lisa. Almost done with this. And you know, I think I, I was gonna do a little bit extra with this um with this embroidery. Like I was gonna kind of maybe work with the thick and thin lines a little bit, but these are so small, these letters, that I think I might just leave it as is. If I add, you know, like on an L, sometimes the the down long a vertical line will be a little thicker than the little extra lines, things like that. Um, or like parts of the S, you know, will be a little thicker, thicks and thins in, in text. I thought I'd maybe do some of that, but it's so small that I think if I add that stuff, I think it will become a little illegible. So I, th I think I'm going to snix that and just keep it. I mean, it's already subtle with this gray. So I think... I think we'll just keep it as is. This tape really worked well. This was, this is a good trick, uh, throwing this tape behind here. I haven't had to, I, this is the first time I thought about the, um, the seam allowance here for a while. All right, last little part of this F. Oh, we got a little, uh, we have a, uh, I was thinking the only dot is um, this period here, but we have a little dot on the I here as well. So let's, I'm going to do the straight parts of this eye first, and then we'll throw in that that uh, French knot for the eye. Typically, I like to do my French knots at the end because when I pull pull the thread, sometimes like a French knot that's way over here, my thread will hook on that French knot like this. So I usually try and keep my French knots to the end, but we're right here, so I might just do it. All right. So I'm going to do this French knot on the eye here. So I'm going to come up kind of on one side of my dot. Or I kind of just went through the middle. That's fine too. All right. I'm going to point my, I'm going to make it like this circle and point my needle away. Kind of like completing that circle. Wrap around twice. I'm going to hold those two wraps. And then I'm going to point my needle back towards the, uh, the fabric and go kind of right next to where I just was. Not the same hole, but right next to it. I'm going to put the needle in just a hair and now I'm going to let go of the stitches and just kind of pull pull the thread to, to the tip of the needle there or where the needle meets the fabric. Then I'm going to pull the needle through, but I'm going to hold those loops in place here. All right, and there we go. That's our little bitty French knot. And let's finish up this end in D, and we'll get that other French knot for the period here. Cute, cute. Oh, I went back to stabbing method. <laughs> it's, it's just more comfortable. With the stabbing method, I don't have to turn my fabric as much either, so I think maybe that's what I'm gravitating towards right now. I know when you did, Joe, I'm with you. When when we did the first blended sampler, I was lucky to get two blocks done a week. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, I did not get two blocks done a week. I was lucky to get one block even close to being done a week. So yeah, getting four all at once is, is a lot for me for sure. So that's why I'm like, you know, we're straight, not going to be able to keep up anyway. So I might just keep this as like a an ongoing project that we do. Where I still, where I still consistently work on blocks, but maybe make these blocks secondary to whatever other other project um, 
whatever other project we're working on. So like I said, I'm, I'm just getting over the hump of like a, a big project that I'm working on um, right now. So I'll be able to focus soon a little bit more on getting like that sketchbook project together and you know maybe a knitting project or, or whatever and and the granny square quilt project I'll have a little bit more time to get my head wrapped around there so until I do we'll probably stick to these uh, splendid sampler two blocks and I will for sure let you know when you know when we're ready to do that llama sketchbook cover and I have an idea of like some cute stuff I can put together for you guys too. So having to do with that. So that, you know, I'm sure you guys, you guys are always the first to hear here on the Facebook lives because that's kind of my rambling train of thought here. Uh, but the like legit details of things usually end up um, in my newsletter. So you guys hear wind of things first and then, then in my newsletter you get the, the real details deets as they say so um i'll let you know for sure in that in the newsletter the details of of that project when i get closer to it all right next french knot same deal all right Ooh, that tape tape's coming off are right, you looking forward to the sketchbook cover? I think it is going to be so freaking fun, that sketchbook cover. I just have to, like I said, I'm rewriting the pattern. It's it's originally from my book, but um, in my book, it's specific to one size sketchbook. And I wanted to make it, I wanted it to make it a better pattern for you guys because that book was written quite some time ago. I want to make it so you can use whatever book cover or whatever size book or sketchbook or whatever um, that you want. Um, then you can, you know, make it for any, any book that you got going on, any thickness or any height and width book. So, um, I'm just, I'm almost done with that pattern and, um, we'll work on that. Oh, Jane here, I will show you, I'll show you guys, um, if you're wondering what Jane's talking about, I'll show you what I mean or what my, um, how I thread the needle. So I always, I don't ever hold I mean, these two pieces are clearly not together, but I never hold um, the needle, like the thread out far and then try and get it in the needle. And I don't lick the thread either. What I do is I, I squish the thread in my hand, like between my fingers like this, and I, I pinch it. And when I unpinch, the moment I see the thread, I put the eye of the needle on top of it and I kind of push down and then I keep unpinching and it just pushes the thread through the needle here. And then I'll, then I'll grab, I'll, I'll grab that end and pull it through. So even, I mean, I think even if you can't see all that well, I think just the unpinching and like if you have a dark thread, if you see that area at all, you can just kind of place, place the needle on top there or just even before you unpinch, just put your fingers there and start unpinching. Um, it just kind of guides guides it through. So anyway, that's that. But we are done stitching this. Like I said, I d I'm not going to put that extra text here. It's like the Bible verse text. Um, I just left the text because I, I think that's fine. I like it like that. Um, I'm going to kind of finger press this the other way. Uh, let me turn my iron on quick. And uh, we'll give this a quick press, and I think we're ready to... Oh, you know what? Maybe not. So I was going to say, I think I'm ready to trim this down, but I forgot. I am saving... Uh, I am not trimming my blocks until right when I'm ready to sew them into the quilt. And that's because the way I'm doing my quilt, I'm doing it quilt as you go. Uh, so... Um, it, it pulls at my fabric a little bit. So sometimes having a little bit bigger block, um, I can, it allows me the fabric to move a little bit, you know, as I quilt. And when I trim it, I still have enough thread. So I think I won't trim it. However, if you guys want to trim it, get your, uh, get your, like I'm using a six and a half inch square, um, or you can just kind of mark it. But I like, I love this square, having this square for this project, the, um, the six and a half inch square, because that's the size we're cutting all our blocks. But you can use it to center, 
center your block so it's a little over I have like three quarters of an inch on each side here maybe just a hair more and then probably the same with the top and bottom yeah and uh, I would give this a good iron and then then just trim all the way around here and then that's that's all you have left to do with that and that's that but like I said I think I'm gonna keep it as is so I'm declaring this guy completed <laughs> We will, um, like before I sew it, you know, together, I'll, I'll trim it where I need it to be trimmed and I'll press it. So I'm going to wait on that. And this will just go in my done, done blocks pile. And we are, I'm getting a lot of done blocks. So soon we're going to have to sew them all together and start some quilting again. I think, I think it's about time to do that again. So, all right, I am going to, uh, wrap it up for the night here you guys and uh, I'm gonna flip you around hello hello so that um, I'm just gonna leave that as is and so when I get this in the in the quilt uh, for that quilt as you go I'll show you kind of my technique for that uh, but yeah I think we might have at least eight finished blocks so we can make some new uh, quilt as you go squares so we should do that soon uh, soon for sure um, and I want to try out those quilting rulers and it's the perfect chance our quilt as you go to do to do the um, quilting the free motion quilting on there so we'll see how that goes uh, so that's it for tonight you guys thanks again for joining me here I'll put this up on YouTube at penguin and fish movies and I will see you guys tomorrow night at 8 30 p.m. central I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. Uh, if you have an idea what we should work on tomorrow, if we should work on another block, uh, we could always start a new block, or should we just work on finishing up, um, you know, quilting as we go, so some blocks together, we could do that too. Uh, let me know in the Penguin and Fish craft Crafters group what you think we should work on tomorrow. That'd be awesome. So, all right, I'll see you then, you guys. Good night. <laughs>